Good evening, Bethlehem and saints of God. Good evening, good morning, good afternoon, or maybe even good night or whatever time you tuned in to. Heads up for the weekend, and heads up for the weekend is where I, as the pastor of the Bethlehem Baptist Church, let you know what's going on this weekend at Bethlehem. But before I get into my announcements today, I want to extend a personal invitation for those who may be listening in Paul's Valley, Oklahoma, who do not have a church home. You may have just moved to Paul's Valley, Oklahoma, and you've been looking and praying for a church, and perhaps God has led you uh, to this video or on the podcast uh, to help lead you to a church home. We would love for you to be a part of our church here at the Bethlehem Baptist Church. We're located at 311 North Dunbar. Again, we're located at 311 North Dunbar. We'd love to see your face in place. Uh, but before then, why don't you go ahead and visit our website at www.heargodsword at Bethlehem.com. Again, our website is www.heargodsword at Bethlehem.com. And there, you can get to know us, and after you get to know us, why don't you go ahead and click the Facebook tab, the Instagram tab, the Twitter tab, and join us in what I call Cyber Church. We'd love for you to be a part of our Cyber Church family. We have many all across the nation and the world that's a part of that, but mostly we're concerned about those who are in Paul's Valley, Oklahoma, Garden County, if you need a church home, you need to look no further. We want to see you this coming Sunday at the 11 a.m. service. It's a one-hour service, uh, so we would welcome you. Bring your family, bring your friend with you, and join us this coming Sunday. Again, you're listening to Heads Up for the Weekend. Heads Up for the Weekend here at uh, our church. And the first announcement is uh, we are going to be fasting and praying tomorrow. Tomorrow is our day of fasting and praying. And uh, that is uh, February the 25th, this coming Friday, tomorrow. And we're going to be fasting and praying from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. And we're fasting and praying. Uh, initially, we started to fast and pray because of our pandemic times. Uh, and we were asking God to deliver us from COVID-19, COVID-19 infection, COVID-19 variances. We we're also praying for our church, praying for our city, praying for the counties that make up our state, and praying for our country. Um, but today we want to give and put a special emphasis for tomorrow. Really, we need to start praying today uh, for what's going on over there in regards to Russia and the Ukraine, into which they say early this morning um, they had a full-on full on attack, uh, Russia against Ukraine, and uh, America is doing what they can uh, to help in regards to sanctions, but as you look at the news, your heart can't help but to weigh heavy on the civilians in that country who are trying to get out and seeing how they're having to go to subways uh, to avoid the bombs. It is just a horrific situation. And some of the things that NATO and America is doing as part of that group is something that will help over time. But I couldn't help but to think that these people need help right now. We know that America, part of NATO, a superpower, but I know a, a, a greater superpower. And I'm asking the saints of God, the prayer warriors to intercede and pray that God would rebuke the advances of Russia in Jesus' name. I said, uh, God would rebuke the advances of Russia, that God would uh, confuse uh, the leadership of Putin, that God will put them back in their place in Jesus' name. And I believe that our God has the power to do so in Jesus' name. I believe when people need help, 
They can't wait for months on a time. They need help right now. And I'm gonna talk a little more about that with our Bible text today, but we're gonna fast and pray and seek our God that he may stop the aggressions of Russia in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, we're gonna rebuke the satanic forces that are coming against that country. All at the same time, we're praying that the gospel will spread within that country, that folk will get saved. But right now, these people need help, and they need it right now in Jesus' name. So we're going to be fasting and praying and about that, praying about that today, and fasting and praying about it tomorrow, along with some of the other things that we've been fasting and praying about. I uh, had some great news in regards to the Armand Arbery case uh, and uh, the Justice Department uh, convicted the three men, which is uh, a very big, another big victory in this case. And we just want to, since we prayed about it, I want to also keep it before us and see how God has worked and how God has moved. And we're praying that the Justice Department will uh, intercede also, in regards to the lock situation, because when local governments don't move, uh, many times it's the Justice Department that has to intercede along with the Brianna Taylor case, because um, we've been fasting and praying about that as well. So we're going to continue to fast and pray uh, for these issues, as well as for those who are sick in our congregation, who are uh, rebuilding themselves, uh, fasting and praying that we be able to overcome and get through this uh, winter warning and storm and ice. There's a lot going on in our world today, but I'm so glad that our God is able and powerful enough to handle whatever we face today in Jesus' name. So we're fasting and praying. I have a lot to fast and pray about. I didn't get to touch all points of fasting and praying, but you be moved by the power of the Holy Spirit uh, and intercede on behalf of the people of God and the people of this world in Jesus' name. Heads up for the weekend. Heads up for the weekend, Bethlehem. As always, we are teaching uh, church and we weigh heavy on Sunday school. And this coming Sunday, we want you to be ready and prepare to study under the heading, How to Avoid Life's Pitfalls. We're under lesson six, uh, and lesson six is entitled uh, The Pitfalls of Guilt and Grudges. The Pitfalls of Guilt and Grudges. And we're gonna be looking at Genesis chapter 50, verses 15 through 21, as we continue to study the life of Joseph, one of my favorite Bible characters. I think this was an excellent series and we're going to finish that series this coming Sunday. It's on page 150 of your Sunday School books so we want you to stay ready so you don't have to get ready. So remember study your lesson in Jesus name. Heads up for the weekend. Also as always we want to invite you to Sunday service uh, February the 27th uh, 11 a.m. service and we are open and we're looking uh, for all the Bethlehemites to be involved in our services. If you hadn't been back in a while, we want to encourage you to come on back and, and there's plenty of room in the family and we want you to come on back. We are safe in the service. We're under COVID protocols and uh, one hour service again. And this is also a perfect time for those first time visitors to show up this Sunday at 11 a.m. Uh, so we wanna see you at 10 a.m. in the sanctuary in Sunday school or in the Zooms, part of that study. We want to see you at the 11 o'clock service. And at the 11 o'clock service, we are finishing out the series that I've entitled uh, the Intimacy Series, uh, full title, How to become intimate or how to be intimate with God, how to be intimate with God. 
And the last message in this series is we have studied all month long about prayer on Sundays and on Wednesdays about the importance of the word of God. And you know, uh, the sessions, uh, which were supposed to be going on now, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, uh, the sessions were, the class sessions were postponed. And uh, we are, we were sad to do so, but with this winter alert, we thought it was would be wise to postpone it back to uh, March the 2nd to March the 4th. 2022 nightly at 6 p.m. Central Standard Time. It's Zoom classes as well as uh, in the sanctuary. Let me remind you of the class. On one side of me, we have the book. On this side of me, uh, Living by the Book is the second class we'll offer for, on these nights. The first class is Fervent. And that's a class on prayer. We send out links for you to pick up the books and be studied up uh, for our lesson. You got another week to study. And if you're anything like me, it's been a wonderful, wonderful study of great learning and God opening up things before me. And that's what uh, prayer and Bible study does. Our teachers for fervent, which is the prayer class, Sister Jocelyn Rushing, and also assisting her sister Denise Stafford. And we are just excited about what we have seen. And as I've said before, they're doing their due diligence. They are preparing and they are working in God's industry. As we talked about last night, the works of God. There's God, if you're a true Christian, he's going to put you to work. And they've been working. And we are so excited about this class that we're offering. And also, we're excited about living by the book. Um, if you studied even just half of this book, you've learned some great principles of how to study the Bible. And your Bible study should have been awakened as a result of studying this book. And um, our teachers will be Deacon Bill Jones, and uh, assisting him will be Brother Maury Boltzell. So we're excited about it, and we want you to get ready for this Wednesday. Get ready, get ready, get ready. We are excited about what God is about to do. So we'll have those sessions. Um, but the last uh, message in the series will be this Sunday. And the message uh, is entitled, The Salvation of Prayer. The Salvation of Prayer. And I'm going to do a brief devotion on the salvation of prayer. We're going to be looking at this Sunday, Psalms 107, um, 28 through 30. And I'll read it in your hearing. It says, then they cried out to the Lord in their trouble. And they brought them out of their, and he brought them out of their distress. He stilled the storms to a whisper. And the waves of the sea were hushed, and they were glad when it grew calm. And he guided them to their desired haven. I read to you Psalms 107, uh, 28 through 30. I told you a little earlier that uh, I was going to uh, talk about what's going on in the Ukraine and how Russia has unprovokably attacked this country. I don't know the spiritual nature of the Ukraine and whether it's considered a Christian nation. I don't know how many Christians are in that nation, but I do know that when I heard about what was going on. Um, and I heard about, in my estimation, putting myself in the shoes of those who are in the Ukraine, when I heard about uh, the lack of help, um, the sanctions that they're doing are meant to uh, squeeze them out of the Ukraine. Um, but I can imagine being a citizen there and 
being woke up with the attacks and, and I showed you the map. I didn't explain it behind me. These were every place in Ukraine behind me where they were sh shooting bombs. Uh, they put out a message and they told the, the flights, uh, planes to uh, not fly over the country. So it was an open out unprovoked war against this country. And I'm in this country, I'm a regular citizen, and you want to send sanctions? Hello, somebody. You know, if I was there, I'd want them to do everything that they can do to come save me. Uh, sanctions are good, oh, for the long haul, but I'm in this bunker in the subway with my children. I'm having to leave everything, my house, my home, and having to try to get out of the country for this unprovoked attack. And all I'm hearing, if I'm hearing anything, is they're going to do sanctions. Hello, somebody. They're going to squeeze them out when they have Provoke when I couldn't have to think, you know, if it was me, if it was me as a Christian, you know what I would do as a Christian? You know what I would do? I would pray this prayer of salvation. It says in the text, then they cried out to the Lord in trouble. And I'm certain there has to be Christians in this nation crying out to the Lord in trouble. And the Christians who are moved like I've been moved. We need to cry out to the Lord because I believe that he has the power to rebuke the advances of Putin and Russia and anybody else that's coming against this nation unprovoked in Jesus' name. And as a matter of fact, I'm going to cry out right now. Father God, in Jesus' name, we believe uh, that you have the power to rebuke the forces of Russia, to rebuke the tanks, to rebuke uh, the planes, to rebuke uh, the bombs, uh, in Jesus' name. And I believe, Father, that I'm joining the masses of Christians and folk oh, who call on your name in and outside of the country, asking your Lord to move uh, right now in Jesus' name name. I'll be fasting and praying tomorrow, asking your father to move father right now in Jesus name. Saved. They said there are over 100,000 orphans. Saved orphans in that country. In Jesus name father, we cry out to you. In Jesus name. Help father. In Jesus' name. The word of God says that our Jesus' name, amen. The word of God says that, 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 that it says, then they cried out to the Lord in their trouble. And he brought them out of their distress. And we're praying that God will bring this country, Ukraine, especially the Christian folk, out of their trouble in Jesus' name. And the text says, and he still the storm to a whisper. We're praying, Lord, that you still the storm that happened this morning, Father, to a whisper in Jesus' name, because we believe you have the power, Father, in Jesus' name. That the waves of the sea were hushed, and they were glad when it grew calm. And he guided them to their desired haven. Somebody this morning is, your situation is not as tough in, as Ukraine. But you were attacked today from all sides by that enemy. If you were attacked today, you better learn how to cry out to the Lord in Jesus' name. This prayer of salvation. You better learn to cry to the Lord in Jesus' name. 
the devil attacks your families, the devil attacks your marriages, that devil attacks your children, as the devil attacks your church, as the devil attacks your career, as the devil attacks your livelihood. You better learn to cry out to the Lord in Jesus' name. He has the power. See, he has the power. He has the power. It says, then they cried out to the Lord in their trouble. He brought them out of their distress. And we're standing on that word today for Ukraine and any other nation that has unprovokedly been attacked. And any other people who were unprovokedly attacked. We're praying that prayer of salvation. Not only that, there's another prayer of salvation that some may need to pray. And this is the salvation for the soul. For the Bible says that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. And perhaps God is using this time of unprovoked attacking to get your attention that you might call out to God for your soul salvation. If you can believe that Jesus Christ was God's only son, that he died for your sins and my sins as well and was buried and raised again on the third day, then today you can pray this prayer of soul salvation. All you have to do is pray, dear Lord Jesus, come into my heart, come into my mind, come into my soul. I give my life over to you. I give my will over to you. I give my way over to you. Today, I want to give my life to you that I might be living for you for the rest of the days of my life. Come into my heart, come into my mind, come into my soul right now, Jesus, and save my soul. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer for the first time, then you really prayed the prayer of soul salvation. And if you're anywhere near Paul's Valley, Oklahoma, we want to see you in the church this Sunday. Because you've been born into the family of God right here at the Bethlehem Baptist Church. You've been born into the body of Christ right here at the Bethlehem Baptist Church. And like a baby that's born in a hospital, um, you have to go home to a family or with a family. As a matter of fact, a baby can't leave without going home with a family or a guardian. So you've been born into the kingdom of God. Uh, if you're in Paul's Valley, Garvin County, and God says, come home, come home to Bethlehem, come home to the body of Christ right here at the Bethlehem Baptist Church. Again, we're located at 311 North Dunbar. Again, we're located at 311 North Dunbar. And we'd love to see your face in the place this coming Sunday at 11 a.m. Visit our website at www.heargodsword at Bethlehem.com. And there you can get to know us. And on that first page there, you can go down the page and see where you can drop me a note. It comes to my email. You send a note or a word or your number, and I'll give you a call and so that we can establish a relationship even before Sunday. And if you prayed that prayer for the first time outside of Paul's Valley, Oklahoma, Garvin County, then you need to find a church home. And we're praying, we'll be praying that God would lead you to a church home. If you need some help, again, visit our website, www.heargodsword at Bethlehem.com. And there you can jot me a note. In the United States, we may be able, because of our national affiliations, to find you a church somewhere near you. But mostly we're praying that God would send you to your church in Jesus' name. We want to thank you for listening to Heads Up for the Weekend and Bethlehem. As always, we challenge, we encourage, uh, try to inspire you to stay connected. We're living in a 
uncertain time. But as I always say, I'm so glad we serve a certain God. And God wants us to stay connected, stay connected uh, to God's person, stay connected to God's precepts. That's the word of God. And stay connected to God's people. And this is why we want to see you this coming Sunday at 11 a.m. And Bethel Nights, meet us in Sunday school at 10 a.m. Central Standard Time. Remember, it is in Zoom as well. You can join in Zoom and come later to the service. But we want to thank you, Bethlehem. And may God bless you and keep you is my prayer.